I'm going to direct your attention to the fall of 2014. During that time, do you recall the Goonies being involved in a theft of vehicles? Yes. And did you have any role within the theft of any vehicles? Yes. And was there a time in the fall of 2014 that you stole a car from the south suburbs? Yes. Objection leading. Sustain. Don't lead. Thank you. Did you ever steal a car from the south suburbs? Yes. Can you please tell us about that? I went and stole a car from like East Hazelcrest or something like that or Harvey because they had to go do a mission. So bro asked me if I could get a steamer. That's stolen cars. Bro is Romeo. He asked me if I had a steamer. I'm going to stop you right there. All right. So you said they were going to do a mission. Yes. Can you tell me what that means, please? Yes. Basically, they found some ops people we was into it with, and they needed a car to get at them. And who is they? The Goonies. And what did you do when you learned this information? I went, I stole a car, came back, and they paid me $40 for the stolen van. And you said it was a van? Yeah. Do you recall the color of that van? I think it was like, I really don't remember to be real. That was a long time ago. And you said they gave you money. Do you recall who gave you the money? Romeo. And is that defended black men? Yes, ma'am. And how much did he give you for the stolen vehicle? $40. Did you drop that vehicle off to Romeo Blackman? I dropped it off to him on 71st and Aberdeen. And was anyone else out on 71st and Aberdeen when you dropped off that van to defendant Blackman? Yeah, Romeo was out there. T was out there. It was like two or three other people, I believe. I know I was there, but I just dropped off the car, so... And what happened after you dropped off the car? They started like getting the seats and stuff ready like to move back or whatever so they could be able to get in and out of the car. And what's the purpose of getting in and out of the car? I mean, it's a minivan. So you're trying to be able to hurry up and get in and out when you're shooting at people. And you said they were removing the seats. Do you recall who was removing the seats? T. And at some point, did individuals drive away with that minivan? Yes. Did you see the minivan leave 71st in Aberdeen? Yes. And do you recall who was in the minivan? Not everybody that was in there. But I know Romeo and T got in. And did you go with them in the minivan? Not that day, no. Were there other cars that were going with T and Romeo in the minivan? There was like two other cars that was following behind. And do you recall what the type of cars those were? I think it was like a Mustang maybe. It was a little small car. It was like a two-door car. And do you know who was driving the Mustang? It was either Raven or Muffy. One of them two. Who is Raven? Raven is Little A's girlfriend. Muffy was Boosie's girlfriend. And have you seen Raven before that day? Yeah. I had seen her before. Your Honor, at this time, I would like to admit and publish Government Exhibit 1209. Any objection of admission of Government Exhibit 1209? No, Your Honor. No objection. No. 
and without objection, you may publish. Do you see the person that's depicted in Government Exhibit 1209? Yes. And who is that? Raven. And you said that was little A's girlfriend at the time. Yeah. Did you see where the man and the other two cars went when they left 71st and Aberdeen? Which direction they were going? I believe they went right, but we heard shots come from the left side. So I'm assuming they only went right, but turned around. And you said you heard shots? Yeah, we all heard shots and stuff. The police was all around the area. And at some point, did the minivan and the other cars come back? The minivan didn't never come back. But we saw the other cars again eventually, like days later. And did you learn anything that happened during that day? Objection, foundation. Sustain, lay a foundation. Did you speak to the members of the Goonies once they came back? That day, we seen... Yeah, they came back. They went to Tuka House that day. And who did you speak to that day? I talked to T and Romeo that day. And what, if anything, did you learn? That they went over there and they went to the third gang side and caught a few of them and shot at them. And I believe somebody got shot that day by one of them. And do you know who got shot? I want to say it was Lala. Who is Lala? It's one of their friends. I guess he a goonie. He used to come around every once in a while. And do you know Lala's real name? I don't. Have you met Lala before? I never met him myself, no. Have you ever seen Lala before? Yes. Approximately how many times? Once, maybe, maybe twice. Your Honor, at this time, I would seek to make Government Exhibit 1207 and publish to the jury. Any objection to admission of Government Exhibit 1207? No, Your Honor. No, Judge. No. 1207 admitted without objection. You may publish. Do you see the person that's depicted in Government Exhibit 1207? Yes. And who is that? That's Lala. And is that the person that you understood was shot that day? Yes. Mr. Hayes, I'm going to direct your attention to November of 2014. Were you still a Goonie member at that time? I was. And specifically, I'm going to ask you about November 19th of 2014. At some point that even, do you recall where you were? I probably was on Aberdeen. And do you recall who you were with? That day, I'm trying to remember because that day I had been in the house, but I came outside, so I could have been with Romeo. I could have been with T. I could have been with Boosie. I could have been with all of them that day. Do you recall a shooting in the Loomis Food Mart? That I do. And I'm specifically asking you about that day. Do you recall where you were earlier that evening? Yes. And where were you? I was on Aberdeen. And do you recall whose house you were in? I was at Millie's girlfriend's house that day. And what is Millie's girlfriend's name? Nene. And when you were at Millie's girlfriend's house, do you recall who was with you? That day, they weren't there with me, but they came back later on that night. And when you say they, who are you talking about? Romeo and T came back that night. And did you talk to Romeo and T? Yeah, I talked to T. 
And who was present for the, that conversation? It was me and T. And what, if anything, did T say to you during that conversation? T told me he finally got Fat Cat. And when he said he finally got Fat Cat, did you know what that meant? He had finally caught him and shot him. I thought he had killed him, but I guess he didn't. And when he said Fat Cat, did you know what he meant? I know who he's talking about, yeah. And who was he talking about? Fat Cat was a knock from the other side. He was either J-Town or Third Gang. He was one of them too. And he was one of your rival gang members? Yes. I'm going to show you, excuse me. Your Honor, at this time, I will seek to admit and publish Government Exhibit 1304. Any objection to the admission of Government Exhibit 1304? No, Your Honor. No. No. It will be admitted without objection. You may publish. I'm showing you what's been marked as Government Exhibit 1304. Do you recognize the person in this exhibit? That's Fat Cat. And you said he was a member of Third Town or Third Town or J Town. He was one of them too. Thank you. When you were talking to Defendant Smith, what did you understand he did to Fat Cat? Shot him. And did he show you anything at that time? He showed me on his phone. The scanner was going off saying people had just got shot and shots fired. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a scanner on the phone. Can you explain that? So it's like a little app where you get like the police scanner and tune in and see what they're talking about and hearing stuff so you can find out what's going on in the area. And you could actually hear police speaking to each other on this app. You could hear the police on that yelling like, do that thing saying shots fired, shots fired. And was it common for Goonies to use the app at this time? Yes. And why did Goonies use that app at this time? Because that helped get away from the police. When Defendant Smith took out his app and showed you, were you able to hear what was going on on the other end? Yeah. You could hear the sirens and stuff. And was there anything being said? They had somebody dead in the car. So objections to staying. Did he mention anyone else besides Fat Cat that day? That day he said that he had caught them. He didn't say the names, but I knew he was talking about when he said Fat Cat. I know it was somebody else with them that was an op. Okay, and did you see Defendant Smith with a gun that night? Yeah. He had a Glock on his waist. And was there anything specific about that gun that you noticed? It had a 30 in it. 30 is like an extended clip. And what's the purpose of extended clip? More shots. And does it hold more ammunition? It holds more than the standard clip would. Have you ever seen the gun before that night? No. When is the next time that you saw a defendant Smith after that night? The next day. And where did you see him? At the same house. I was at Nini's house. What, if anything, did he do when you saw him the next day? He came and showed me the article. And it was an article on a phone saying, like, the Loomis store had got shot up. And, like, somebody died. And, like, two other people got shot. And when you said showed you an article, was this on an app on his phone? Or, no, it was just like Google. Like the Chicago Sun-Times. 
And it mentioned that someone had got shot at the store. It said like, like two people got shot and one died. And did you learn, eventually learn who died? Yeah, I eventually found out who it was. And who was that? It was a girl. And did you know her? I didn't know her, no. I'm going to direct your attention to a few days later, November 24th, 2014. Did you get arrested that day? I did. And why did you get arrested? For possession of a gun. At approximately 7.10 or a little after p.m. that night. Do you remember where you were? I think I was at Nini's house. Before you were arrested, do you remember where you were? Oh, I was walking from getting some weed from G-Boy. Okay, and when you say weed, do you mean marijuana? Marijuana. And you went to G-Boy's house. And is that the house that you previously testified about? Yes. In Government Exhibit 2330? Yes. Okay. And who were you walking with? It was me, Romeo, and Boosie. Your Honor, at this time, I would seek to admit and publish Government Exhibit 2208. Any objection to admission of Government Exhibit 2208? No objection. No objection. No objection. Admitted without objection. You may publish. Thank you. I'm showing you Government Exhibit 2208. Do you see the person that's photographed in th that exhibit? I do. And who is that person? Boosie. And how do you know Boosie? Boosie was a goonie. And how long have you known Boosie at this time? I met Boosie around 2013, but like around 2012, me and him had got arrested together. And is Boosie still alive today? No. And what was his role in the game? He was a shooter. So you say you were walking with defended black men. And Boosie, is that right? Yes. And do you recall where you were that night walking? He was crossing through from Aberdeen Way. And what cross street were you at? Like 71st? Your Honor, at this time, I would seek to admit and publish Government Exhibit 1400. Any objection to admission of Government Exhibit 1400? No. No objection, Judge. No. It will be admitted without objection. You may publish. Thank you. Do you see the map that's depicted in Government Exhibit 1400? I do. And can you orient the ladies and gentlemen of the jury as to what this map shows? I'm going to blow it up a little. Can you orient the ladies and gentlemen of the jury of this area? Do what now? So, what streets do you see on this map? Oh, I see Aberdeen, Carpenter, Morgan, Sangamon, Peria, between 70th and 71st. And do you see the location where you were at before you got arrested that you were just talking about at 71st and Aberdeen? Yeah, I do. Okay. Can you circle that location on the screen in front of you? Okay. And were you at the intersection at that time? Yeah. And this was a little after. This was at night. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it was dark. Okay. And when you were, you say you went to buy some marijuana at G-Boy's house. And you were coming back, correct? Yes. Counsel, don't lead, okay? Yep, sorry, Your Honor. 
Did you have a gun on you that night? Not at the moment I didn't, but when the police got there I did. Did you, were you aware of anyone having a gun on you, on them that night? Yes. And who had a gun? Romeo. And did you see that gun on Romeo before you were walking? Yes. And what kind of gun was it? A Glock, the same Glock that he had. How did you know the same Glock when T had when? That night that he came over there, he told me he got Fat Cat. And how did you know it was the same gun? Because they already had showed me the gun before and told me not to get caught with it. Was there ever a time between when the girl got shot and this night that we're talking about right now that you had the gun? Yes, they brought it to me at Nini's house for protection. And who brought it to you? Romeo brought it to me. He told me, don't get caught with it. And when he said, don't get caught with it, what did you understand him to mean? I understood that something wasn't right about that gun. I knew if something had been done, if you don't say don't get caught with it, I assume somebody got killed or something with it. And why did you need protection? Because I was a goonie and I lived over there. And after Defendant Blackman gave you that gun, did you ever give it back to anyone? Yeah, I gave it back to Romeo when we got ready to walk to get the weed. And was this on November 24th of 2014? The day I got locked up? Yes. Okay. Now, when you and fellow Goonies walked in Inglewood, do you walk down the streets? No. We have take cuts and gangways. When you say a cut, what is that? Like in the side of the house, like between a house. And why do you take those cuts? Because we can't walk on the main streets. If we do, nine times out of ten, we're going to get shot at. And this specific night that we're talking about, were you taking cuts or were you walking down the street? We took cuts. On your way back from buying the marijuana, what if anything happened? We was walking back. As soon as we got to 71st, we saw the police turn their blue lights on. So we didn't know if they were blue lighting the car or us. So we just kept walking. But then we realized they were blue lighting us. So we started. When you say blue lighting, what do you mean by that? They turned their sirens on. And did they also turn on their lights? Yeah, they turned on their sirens, their lights, all that, and started chasing you, basically. And did you see this police vehicle? It was a truck. And do you know if it was, had markings on it, or was it, it was an unmarked truck? Okay, and when you, you said they lit you up, what did you and Romeo and Booty do? When we realized they was laying us up, we all ran. And where did you go? I ran to a cut. And when I ran to the cut, me and Romeo was together running. And when I got there, he passed me the gun. So I ran. The only reason why I knew he was going, I didn't care about him passing me the gun. And nothing like that because it's like, it's my homie. I don't want him to get messed up. So let me take you back. So where did you and Romeo, can you show on the map where you and Romeo went? We went, we ran and ended up meeting up like right here in this alley. And that's where we, well, he passed the gun off to me. When he did that, I ran across the street this way and went through a gangway. And when I jumped the gate, the gun fell and went off. 
So for the record, the witness drawn a diagonal line from 71st Street down to the left, then another diagonal line down to the right to Aberdeen, just under 71st Street. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you said that where were you and Romeo were, he passed you the gun? We were right in the alley or like between May and Aberdeen. And did you take the gun from him? I did. And where did you put it? I put it on my hip and I ran. And when you were running, did you see any police officers running with you? Yeah, they were chasing us in cars and everything. And you say you went back towards Aberdeen at that time? Yeah, I went one. We all split up at that point. And where did you go next? I ran to Aberdeen. I went through a cut of a house. When I jumped the gate to get through the cut, the gun fell off my hip and it went off. So I went to look down and try to get it. And I realized there were way too many blue lights coming towards my way. So I just ran to the back and went yards over to run to Nini's house. So when the gun fell out of your waistband and went off, did you do that purposely? No. And you left the gun where it fell, did you? Is that, I didn't see where it was. I couldn't find it, so I just kept going because it was dark. And then you went, where did you go after you left the gun where it fell? I started jumping fences yard to yard to get to Nini's house. And where does Nini live? Nini lives right down Aberdeen too. Were the police still chasing you until you got to Nini's house? They were, but I don't think they seen where I had went, so they were just outside looking for me. And when you got to Nini's house, did you go in the front door or the back door? I ran to the back door, banging the door, and her uncle let me in. What happened when you, did you go into Nini's house? I got inside, I stripped my clothes off and put bleach up on my arms and stuff. And why did you put bleach on your arms? To get the gunpowder off me. And was that a common practice of the Goonies? Yeah, if you don't got no bleach and you running, you use your piss. It all kills gunpowder. And what's the purpose of killing gunpowder? So it won't be if we get in a situation or something like this, you can't prove I shot any guns. After you poured the bleach on you, what did you do next? I stripped all my clothes and changed clothes. And then I went upstairs and sat down on the couch. And when you went upstairs, was Nini in the house? Yeah, Nini was there. Was anyone else there? It was just me, Nini, her aunt, her mom, and her uncle. That was it. Everybody else went to the store. So that was all I saw. And did anyone come in the house? Boosie came in the house. And when Boosie came into the house, did you have a conversation with him? Yeah. He walked in and he was like, boy, you a demon. You shot at them. You a demon. He was like, man, just stay low. Lay low. How long was Boosie in the house? Boosie was in there probably three minutes and then he left out. And when he left out, the police came banging on the door. And what happened when the police banged on the door? They said, let, let him in. We told him no. And they said that if we didn't open the door, they was going to lock up all of the little kids that was outside. And did someone eventually open the door? Yeah. And what happened when the door was open? When they opened the door, the police came in and walked straight to me while I was sitting on the couch. They passed everybody else and walked straight to me and asked me, where did I just come from? And were you arrested? Yes. 
And was that for possessing the gun? Yeah. And was that the same gun that you saw Defendant Smith have a few days earlier? Yes, ma'am.